expect, and I know this topic has been covered plenty of times, many, many, many times, and I'm going to cover it again. Was Jesus a witch? Um, my answer is no. So wait, hear me out. Don't go, because I know this is going to sound like, yeah, finally somebody who left Christianity who says Jesus is not a witch, or the other one's going to go, the other side go, what do you mean he's not? Now, let me explain the reason why I say he's not a witch. Because from my study, the word witch came along with the actual word witch, not where the word witch come from. The actual word witch, W-I-T-C-H, comes from the church. And there was no church set up as we know it today when Yahshua, if that's his real name, was around. So, no, he was not a witch. Did he perform magic? Yes. Was he a magi, which is where we get the word magician, which is where we get the word um, magic from? Yes, he was. And actually, magi, which also comes from magus, was, uh, was actually the original word for a priest. So, in saying it, Yeshua was a high priest. Now, back then, um, before all this other, now with that being said, back then before all this other stuff, you know, came about and switched it up, you had to be initiated into an order in order to be a high priest. So he was also in a secret society. He was um, he was a mason, not the masons as we know them today. He was a mason. If you don't believe me, the Bible says he was a carpenter. And if you actually study that, that's a misprint. He actually was a textile, which means he could have been a brick mason, a carpenter, a metal bender, whatever. He was a mason. And all masons back then were in a secret society. They knew um, mathematics. They knew how to bend them. They knew these certain things to bring in certain vibrations into the structures, into what they was building. So with that being said, do I believe he was which? No. Was he only because I don't believe in that word because that word was made up by the people who started the church as we know it today. Um but was he a magician? Was he a magi? Yes he was. Was would, would you consider him a sage? Yes. Most sages people don't know do know magic. Um and there's a lot of magic that goes on church, a lot of rituals that go down to church that people don't even um realize and I might, might not go into it. I'm not saying whether they're good or bad, because it just is, but I do feel as though, you know, whatever spirituality you decide to be, you should be informed of what you're getting into and make a conscious decision before you take that leap. So it has its place. It has its place in my life. It's no longer there. But anyway, now, with him being a magi, he did study in Tibet. He studied in Egypt. He studied in... uh. Uh, I want to say the Himalayas, but that's probably wrong. A couple other places, basically, he studied. And if you notice, when you read the Bible, a lot of the great ones, somehow they somehow they was in Egypt for some time. Why was they in Egypt? Obviously, they were studying the mysteries. They were in the mystery schools of Egypt. Um, so, with that being said, the actual character, Jesus, if you don't, well, for one, if you don't believe me, he turned water into wine. Some people say that symbolic. Some people say believe he actually did it. Some people say that symbolic. Um, if you're alchemist, you're gonna say that symbolic. If you're uh, if you're Hebrews, you're saying symbolic. Even with the sim- even with the symbolism in it, there's still something deeper that went on spiritually that he did. Um, if you believe literally that he turned water into wine, then obviously that would be magic. So yeah. He was a magi, and like I said, the original word magi meant priest, and he was a high priest. He also had a high priestess, but I'll leave that for another video. Um, so yeah, I know this topic has been covered plenty of times, plenty of times, um, but it's a topic that will never die, and it will always be there. And in order to understand where everybody's come from when they're saying he's a magic, there's people in the church who does these studies who says he's a Magi too. Um, they don't understand it. He has to understand that all this stuff about so-called witches and witchcraft came about through the church. Um, as the church was taking over, because it was a political move, what they did was they had to find a way to shut down everything. So they created this whole thing of witches and demons and all, yes, they created. Not saying that there are good spirits and bad spirits, but the whole demonology theory 
Oh, well, I'm not gonna say it's a theory because once you give energy to it, it is real in the spiritual world. But this, but that part was created by the uh, beginning of the church, the old church system, the Nicene Creed. When you study, when you start studying the Nicene Creed and um, uh, the Nicaea, the Council of Nicaea, and all that, you will see where all this other stuff falls into line. Um, and you know, so was Jesus? So that goes into that leads into the next question. Well, if Jesus was a magi. Was Jesus a pagan? Yes, he was. Now, like I said, the word pagan, first of all, was also made up by the church. And in the very beginning, pagan meant um, country dweller or civilian. Because in the beginning, in order to be a Christian, you was a soldier. Where do you think we got the soldier from? I'm a soldier in the oh, I can't sing, but you get the point. That word, that song. In the beginning, Christians, you were a soldier. You had to serve time as a soldier for the church. This, this was... You know where it came out. So anybody who was not for the church was a civilian, also known as a pagan, which actually means country dweller. So, was Jesus a country dweller? Well, he obviously wasn't for the church. He he came against the Pharisees all the time. He was a Essene. He wasn't for the Pharisees, which at the time was the church, which still grows into the church we have today. Um. So yes, he was a pagan. He was a magi. Do I believe he was a witch? No, only because I don't believe in that word only reason I do not believe in the word which because that's what the church made up and since I no longer connect myself to the church the church is not going to define me and what I do or who I am because that means I still have that mindset Mm -mm, no but did he do magic yes did he perform rituals yes did he make sacrifices I have no idea but there was (laughs) I haven't said it yet but there was a sacrifice done with two doves at his birth he um, John the Baptist was also in the same set as he was, and John the, ba- John the Baptist, who baptized him, that was an initiation into a higher order. When he went up on a mountain and did his um, 40 days and 40 nights, that was a ritual. That was a spiritual ritual. Um, when, you study ancient, when you study ancient tribes, or not even ancient tribes, or African tribes, or something not American, or, or even some Native American tribes, if you study them, and I hate calling Native Americans because this thing, man. You said America. Who the hell gave us the right to call America? But that's a whole other story. But um, even when you study them, you'll you'll see that at a certain point in a man's life, sometimes what happens once when a boy goes through puberty to manhood, and sometimes it happens goes from puberty to manhood, and there's another time when you go from manhood to um, being initiated into the elders, where he goes off. The male the male goes off by himself, and they sit there um, sometimes a week sometimes a day, sometimes it just depends on the cultural background, but they'll sit there um, by themselves. And the whole purpose of sitting by themselves is for them um, to sit there and, one, overcome any fears that they have. Because, you know, when you're there alone, darkness, every fear that you have is going to come to mind. And, two, to really have time to sit there in silence and contemplate your own concepts, your uh, old ways of thinking, to get rid of it. And when you come out, you come out of it, I'm a better person, I'm a new person, and this is the same ritual that Jesus Jesus did. This is one of the rituals that he that he did do. Um, the baptism is an initiation ritual. Baptism by water. In every culture, there's some type of baptism, some type of water touching your head, touching your body, water dripping over your thing. Um, spiritual cleanses. Baptism is also spiritual cleanse, a clean slate for a new level of what you're trying to do. So he was baptized. So this. All this stuff plays together, and now I'm, I'm saying this because, you know, people think that one thing is demonic, which actually the word demon means power, so yes, it is very powerful. So it's not evil, it's just demonic never took on that negative connotation before the church. And actually, I don't want to downplay the church, but actually what the church did is take all of your power away from yourself so now you have to go through a third party to get your power now I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing because some people can't handle it to whom much is given um, there's also much responsibility that goes along with it so depending on where you're at in your life that's not necessarily a bad thing I ain't there in my life no more I don't think I was ever there in my life and that's probably why I had a lot of issues um, spiritually spiritual wise because if you know me <laughs> You ain't telling me what to do. 
I, I have a, I have an issue with that. Um, or, you know, I wrote, I was raised in the Catholic Church, and one of the things I've always had an issue with was confession. If God's everywhere, why the hell am I talking to you? I've always had an issue with confession. If, if, if you telling me that God is everywhere, the hell I need you for? Why am I telling you my sins? He was there when I committed him. Now, I longer, no longer believe in the concept of sin, but I'm just saying. That's one of the issues I've always had as a child. Um, you know, thinking about that never made sense to me. But... Yeah, so back to the point, because uh, I tend to ramble. Jesus was a Magi, and before you start saying good and evil, blah, 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 understand where the concept of evil actually came. And when you understand balance, you understand that, um, when you understand balance, you understand that there's a time for destruction, there's a time for creation. Everything is a life force. The problem is with things that are being destroyed, when we're too emotionally attached to it, we consider that evil, and that's not it. It's not that's that's we created evil because we're not ready to let go yet when spirit is telling us you need to let this go you need to let this die you need to get rid of the situation so with that being said yes no i don't believe jesus was a witch because i don't believe in that word because that word was made by the church um there's other words where that word came from but the actual word w-i-t-c-h came from church so no was he a high priest yes was he initiated seek orders yes was he a magi yes did he perform magic yes so, was he a magician? Yes. Was he a great magician? Yes. Were these just illusions and tricks? No. He actually did heal people. Yes, he did. He actually did turn water into wine. Um, when you start learning the elements, he conquered the elements of water. Um, you know, and he conquered the element of water. For my faith, he also conquered the elements of um, of 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 wind. And I say that because he was able to call the spirits easily. And in the Bible it says he talked to, I want to say more, Elijah and somebody else. Who were dead? He also was, he, who were dead, mind you, and apostles witnessed this. He was talking to dead people. That's necromancy. So, yeah. And he also um, was able to call people back from death. He called Lazarus back from death. That's necromancy and now these things are possible and before you start saying well Jesus was Jesus and that's why Jesus did it because he was God um, before you start saying that to other people know your Bible because your Bible says that Jesus says Jesus own words you can do these things in greater I'm going to say it again Jesus himself in the Bible says you can do these things in greater so if Jesus did it and he's telling you you can do these things in greater it cannot be evil because he's telling you not only can you do what he did but you can do it better to a greater extent than he did it. So, before you start getting into these concepts of good and evil and all this other stuff, and I don't want, you know, anybody to see this video want to get into that debate down in the comments, know what your word says. Know what your word says. Um, so, back again, because again, I'm rambling, and I do that because I can feel a lot of times what's coming with people, the way that people are going to think, and... I don't want my channel to be about that debate. Da, 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 da. No, we're going straight from spirit. We're going straight from truth. And in truth, this is what he did. It is in the Bible. This is what it's called. This is what he learned. Um, other stuff that are, other stuff are in the books that they pulled out of the Bible. This is why I told you about the Nazi and Creed and study it and study how the Bible was made. Um, and you know, everything what we our concepts of good and evil is messed up. And if he could say we could do these things in greater, who are you to say the person that's doing it is evil when he told you himself and this is who you believe, who you worship, you can do it. And better than he did it. Let's just think about that. So yes, again, repetitive, but I'm gonna say it one more time, was he a witch? No. I already said why I don't believe that. Was he why I don't believe he's a witch? Was he a magician? Yes. Was he a high priest? Yes. Was he initiating orders? Yes. Was he a mason? Yes. Was he a secret society? Yes. So with all that, I'll leave you in light and love, blessings, and peace.